We're going to have a look at Tentsmuir Forest today, but before we do so, we'll just have a wee walk along the beach here. Now there's three miles of sand dunes and beach at the mouth of the Tay Estuary here, known as the Tentsmuir Sands, and it was included in the Marine Conservation Society's Good Beach Guide 2003. This means that it is included in the charity's list of Scotland's 32 cleanest beaches, and once you've seen it, you understand why it's absolutely beautiful. You can also enjoy fine views north to Angus and south to the Lothians. There's several walks begin at the Kinshaldi car park and the land, 12 square miles of it, was acquired by the Forestry Commission in the 1920s and planted predominantly with Scots and Corsican pine. In addition to commercial forestry, careful management has created an interesting mixture of open spaces, ponds, trees and sand dunes that are rich in wildlife, including three species of roosting bat. Now there's Corey, a way to see these two lovely golden retrievers. There's dozens of dogs brought their owners here today for a walk along the beach and the forest. It's a lovely day right enough. We're now heading towards Tentsmuir Point. This area is included as one of Scotland's 73 National Nature Reserves, which are areas of land set aside for nature where the main purpose of management is the conservation of habitats and species of national and international significance. Now this area, it forms an important roosting and feeding area for huge congregations of sea duck, weeders and wild fowl, as well as a hollow area for over 2,000 both common and grey seals. The reserves, grassland and dunes are especially favoured by a wide variety of colourful butterflies. During World War II, the shoreline here extended much further east into what is now the sea. A recent erosion is uncovering Tentsmuir wartime archaeology buried in the sand. The Second World War railway wagon you see here it was discovered in the sand in 2010. Now it was originally used to transport ammunition and supplies as well as for gunner practice by the Air Force training unit from nearby lookers. A target mounted on the wagon was powered by a small motor and it moved along a section of railway track forming a moving target for the aircraft gunners to practice their shots. You might sometimes see a head of cattle grazing here. Now this is to stop the dunes from tree cover. We're now at the ice house and although built close to the high water mark, the ice house rapidly becomes further from the sea as the foreshore builds eastwards. The beaches and estuaries around Tentsmuir were important for salmon fishing and the ice house that you see here was originally built around 1852 to store ice gathered from local ponds in winter. The ice was then used to preserve the fish before shipping it south. Layers of heather or straw packed around the ice provided insulation creating a primitive but effective deep freeze. In prehistoric times the district around Tayport was inhabited by Neolithic settlers whose clay pottery and finely wrought stone arrowheads have been found in considerable quantities on Tents Muir, once an area of heath and moorland. These settlers had not learned how to use metals and did not practice agriculture but lived by hunting and fishing. Tents Muir has also been the site of dozens of exciting Bronze Age finds implements and ornaments made by Celtic invaders who settled in the district have been discovered near the remains of iron smelting sites. 
Now that's us back at the car park. We've had a, a lovely walk on the beach and the forest. I would certainly recommend this place for a day out. Bye for now.